In the name of Jesus, amen. How does the church view baptism? It's a good question. Yes, how does the church look upon baptisms in general? Now, regardless of which church denomination one finds himself or herself in, I think it is safe to say that pretty much every church and every Christian in America, or perhaps the world, has a favorable disposition towards a person being baptized. They will not oppose it. They'll be favorable towards it. Now, for the sake of time, we cannot go into all the different theological positions of the various denominations and what they do with baptism itself. We simply do not have enough time to cover every theological aspect of their view of baptism. Furthermore, covering such a topic like this would be better suited for a Sunday school Bible study or an adult Bible study in the fellowship hall. Nonetheless, even though the majority of Christians and churches have a favorable view towards baptism, I do still believe that the Christian in general and the church in general has perhaps skewed, yes, skewed the view of baptism, generally speaking. For example, let us consider how we view baptisms themselves, how we view baptisms here at St. Paul's. I know for myself, when I look in the bulletin and see the word baptism, it has a way of conjuring up a warm and happy feeling within. When I look out you in the pew, when I'm doing baptisms as a pastor up here, when I see your faces and I see your dispositions in the pew, I suspect there's also warm feelings of happiness. Furthermore, baptisms typically have, could we say, a nostalgic feeling to them as well. When we see a baptism, it, in a sense, it brings us back to older days when maybe our children were baptized or parents or friends or relatives, those times that are stuck in the past, perhaps those better times in the past. These baptisms, they have a way of reminding us of happiness long ago, a very nostalgic feeling. Now, if St. Paul's were to be one of those contemporary churches with a big band and special lights, perhaps a fog machine to boot, and a big stage up front with a pool or a jacuzzi on that stage, now I tell you what, baptisms would not take on that nostalgic, warm feeling for you. Still, instead, baptisms would be viewed perhaps slightly different for those contemporary churches as a feeling of victory, we could say, or commitment. Baptisms are viewed as a dedication, a act of the will, a determination, dedication towards God himself. In fact, it is quite common to see baptisms in these contemporary churches and see someone dunked underneath the water, and then as they're coming out of the water, you, you can see them actually quite literally coming out with their hands raised in the air, cheering like they just hit a game-winning home run in a World Series and yelling at the same time. Definitely in these churches, baptisms seem to come across with a sense of victory, with dedication, willpower, and determination. Again, I believe it is safe to say that regardless of those dispositions, Christians and churches in general, they have a favorable attitude towards baptism but they still view it incorrectly. So that brings us to the question this morning. How should we view baptism? How should we view baptism? In a word, get this, in a word, hear this, violent. <laughs> yes, you heard that correctly. In a word, violent. You heard that correctly. Baptisms are violent. They are fierce, and they are destructive. Indeed, not what you would think. Take our baptismal liturgy for an example, and you will see exactly what I mean this morning about baptisms being violent. The Lutheran Church has long mentioned two biblical accounts from the Old Testament, Old Testament in our baptismal liturgy. If you actually page through your hymnal and you get to page 268, you will see the baptismal rite in your hymnal. And right there on 268, on the very bottom, you will hear about these two stories, Noah and the ark, as well as Moses, yes, Moses, parting the Red Sea. The ark with Noah and Moses in the Red Sea. 
Indeed, the church has long seen the water in both of these accounts as figures of baptism. That is to say, the water in that Red Sea and the water in that story of Noah and the ark, they foreshadow baptism that is to come. Now, briefly, with Noah, we read the Old Testament that after the ark was built, and after all the fuzzy and large animals they gathered together on that ark, well, we hear that water burst forth. Not just a little water from heaven, but water itself from the ground burst forth, violent water that came forth, and water that came down. It's important to keep in mind that this water that came forth was not a nice warm shower. It was not a spa treatment for the people of Noah's day. But instead, it was destructive. It was destructive. The water destroyed all the evil that had filled the earth. The flood, it actually came and it drowned about. It drowned idolatry and perversion and evil. Sure, we're used to seeing those pictures, those children's pictures of happy Noah and happy animals waving from the deck top of the ark, waving their hands as if they're going away on a Caribbean cruise. But we're often unaware, yes, we are often unaware of the evil that is being drowned underneath the ark in the mighty waters, those violent waters that flood the earth. Now, consider also Pharaoh, <clears throat> if you will. Consider Pharaoh and his great army. We also hear about that in our baptismal liturgy on the bottom of 268. Pharaoh and his great army, after the Hebrews left Egypt itself for the promised land, Pharaoh, he would have no part of that. And so Pharaoh and his great army pursued the Hebrews. And at the Red Sea, yes, at the Red Sea though, the Lord parted the water so that the Hebrews could walk in between the waters to the promised land. Well, Pharaoh's army, quite simply, he would not have it. And so Pharaoh pursued Moses as well. And we hear in the text that Moses was commanded to stretch out his arms to make that sea come crashing down upon the pursuing Egyptian army to destroy every last one of them. And the water, it did exactly that. Keep in mind, this was no accident, but it was intentional. The destruction of Pharaoh and his evil army was intentional. It was intentional with violent, destructive water. Now, in both of these accounts, the point is that the water was violent, and it drowned, and it destroyed. It was not a gentle, smooth stream, but a mighty, destructive power that came about. And so, <clears throat> and so it makes sense why we say that baptisms are violent. They're violent, get this, towards sin, they're violent towards death, and they're definitely violent towards the devil himself. Consider for a moment some of the fierce and destructive words that are used from the scriptures and our Lutheran heritage that talk about baptism. Hear this. This is your bapti baptism, dear saints. Every one of you, this is talking about your baptism, what happened to you. When you were baptized, you were, get this, you were plunged into water so that you were snatched from the jaws of the devil. In baptism, you died with Christ on the cross. In baptism, you were buried with Christ in the tomb. Baptism means death to all of your selfishness and sin itself. It means death. Baptism sets the rhythm for your daily lives. How you daily, get this, drown. You drown that old Adam. Did you hear that? Plunged, snatched, died, buried, death, and drowned. That is your baptism. That is your mighty baptism. Now, perhaps you have not thought of your baptisms with such strong language before. Aggressive words, if you will. And perhaps these strong and aggressive words may cause a bit of discomfort or maybe even fear for you. If so, my friends, trust me. Trust me when I say this. You and I do not, we do not want an apathetic we do not want a calm and an incapable baptism. We don't want a lame, powerless baptism. We do not want the smooth and gentle waters. We want the violent waters of baptism. And the reason is this. The reason is this. 
You see, we do not want an apathetic and a calm and an incapable baptism because you and I do not have an apathetic or calm or incapable Savior. You see, your baptisms are fierce, they're destructive, and they're violent because Jesus himself, well, he is indeed fierce and destructive and violent towards sin, death, and the devil itself. Jesus is the end of sin's condemnation. Jesus is the antidote for death. Jesus is the victor over the devil. Baptized saints, mark this. Your baptisms are fierce, they're destructive, and they're violent towards sin, death, and the devil. And that, that is a great thing. That is a very good thing. That is a thing that is so great that it should cause us to smile with glee, with a confidence in Christ, knowing that it is indeed violent towards those three evil foes. And so baptisms are not just warm water, we confess today, spa water applied to a child for nostalgic reasons. Baptisms are not a lame symbol of a puny human dedication towards God Almighty. Baptism is none of this nonsense, but instead it is a mighty flood that drowns your sin, washes over death, and destroys the power of the devil. For God sanctified, get this, he sanctified your baptism to do this because of Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River that one day long ago. And so, dear saints, remember your baptisms, indeed, and remember them often by making the sign of the cross upon your head or upon your heart. Never forget that Christ instituted baptism for you and that your baptism is a work of the triune God for you. And also, do not forget that your baptisms are not only violent, but they're also wonderfully powerful for you. Do not forget that in your baptism, you will also get this raised with Christ to newness of life. In your baptism, the Lord, he gave you the Holy Spirit and made you his own. He did not do this. He did not do this for a mere, he did this, excuse me, he did this, he did this to keep you secure in the holy ark of the Christian church as you approach the promised land at the end of your pilgrimage. Indeed, he did this, all of this, to place you right here in this place, in the holy ark of the church, to keep you secure as you approach the promised land at the end of your pilgrimage. Your baptism is indeed violent. It's powerful. It is mighty because you're Jesus indeed, is mighty himself. Blessed saints, may you be strengthened through the mighty waters of your baptism this day and until your last day as well. May you always be reminded of who you belong to and what you have been given in that mighty waters, that mighty water of your baptism, where you were baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs>